Hey guys, hope you're well. So this lesson, we are gonna talk about this formula over here. So the N, the small N stands for number of mole, which we've looked at in previous lessons where we looked at this formula over here. The mole is such a large or an important part of chemistry that you are gonna see this N in many formulas, okay? The capital N stands for number of now it could be atoms, or it could be particles, or molecules, depending on what we are looking at. Okay, let's write that a little bit better. It's the number of um, atoms, or it could be particles, or it could be molecules, for example. And then Na, or it's N, and then there's a little um, subscript over there, which is an A. This stands for Avogadro, Avogadro's number. This was a scientist, okay? Now, this number is a number that you will be given in your tests or exams. It is 6.02, so 6.02 multiplied by 10, and then the exponent is 23, okay? That is a number that you're gonna use quite a bit, um, but they will give that to you in your exams. You know, like in your exam, they give you like a table where you've got all these constant values. That will be given to you, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to use this formula. And remember that these formulas can be used in different ways. So let's quickly make a triangle. You see how this capital N is at the top? So whenever we make a triangle, and you know which triangles I'm talking about, right? You know, like in electricity, you've got the triangles that have like a um, V, I, and a R. Or maybe in electricity, we also have like a Q, I, and a T. And in one of the previous lessons with moles, I showed you that there was um, M, N, and capital M. So whenever we have a triangle, it makes our life very easy to be able to use the formula in different ways. So you see that this N is at the top. So we put the N at the top. And then this one we can just put over here. And then this one we can just put over there. And then from that, you can work out different formulas. So for example, um, if you want to calculate, let's say you want to calculate this one over here. Then because that one is at the top, let's just highlight it quickly. Then you can see that these two at the bottom, they are next to each other. So you would multiply them. So you would say n is equal to small n multiplied by Avogadro's number, okay? Now, maybe you wanted to calculate this one. Maybe we already know what that one is, but let's just say we needed to work that one out. Well, they would actually never really ask us to do that, so let's not worry about that one. Um, and then let's say they asked you to calculate this one. So then you would say n equals, now this is at the top, and this is at the bottom. And then you would just be using the normal formula. Okay, so let me show you some questions now. Now, you don't need to memorize this triangle. What will happen is that in an exam or a test, they will give you this formula. That formula is given to you, and then from that, you can make a triangle because the number that's always, the, the letter that's always at the top always goes at the top of the triangle, and then you can just say N and NA like that, and then you can make a triangle for yourself. So here's a question. It says, determine the number of mole, let's rather say mole, if you have... 12.04 times 10 to the 23 particles. So we can use this formula as it is. We're trying to calculate the number of mole. The number of particles that they have given us is this number over here. So 12.04 times 10 to the 23. And then Na is Avogadro's number, which is this number over here. So you could just go say 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And then you could, um, if you had to calculate that, you're gonna end up with two mole. So here's our next example, and I would advise that you stay to the end of this lesson because I'm also gonna be doing some really interesting things in this lesson. I'm also gonna be teaching you how to use this formula together with this formula. So we're gonna use both of these at the same time. And I'm also gonna be showing you questions where, for example, if you have calcium carbonate, um, I'm going to ask you, for example, how many particles or molecules of calcium carbonate do we have? And then I'm also going to say how many oxygen atoms do we have or something like that, or how many carbons do we have? So teachers like asking those. So just stay to the end of this lesson where we're going to talk about all of those things. So here it says, determine the number of molecules in 3 mole of H2O. 
Okay, so we know that N is stands for mole. N is the number of, for example, atoms or molecules, for example, molecules. And then Na is Avogadro's constant or Avogadro's number. And that is the 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So they're saying determine the number of particles. So they want us to work out N. So you need to know how to rearrange this formula. So I advise that you just remember this little triangle, which I literally just made by looking at that. Um, I know that N is at the top, so I put it at the top. And then the other two just go down here. Okay, so if you want to get this part by itself, you are going to multiply these two parts together. So that's going to be N multiplied by Avogadro's constant. And so to work out the number of particles, you're going to take the moles, which is 3, and you're going to multiply that by the number of, well, Avogadro's number, sorry, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And if you calculate this, you get 1.806 multiplied by 10 to the power of 24 molecules. So here's a pretty cool question. It says, determine the number of molecules in 36 grams of H2O. Now, if we just try to use this formula, we'll run into some problems because N is the number of mole. Um, N is the number of particles or molecules or atoms. And that's what they're asking us to find, okay? So this is the unknown. We don't know what this one is. Now we know that Na is a constant, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So we don't know what this one is. We do know what this one is, but we don't know what this one is. So you see we have two unknowns. So that's a bit of a problem. But then we know from previous lessons that there's also this formula that we could use. So we know that the small m is the given mass measured in grams. And then the capital M is the molar mass on the periodic table, and that's measured in grams per mole. So what we could do is we could first go and uh, use this formula to calculate the number of moles. And once we have the number of moles, then we can carry on with this formula. So we could say that um, N is equal to 36 divided by. Now to work out the molar mass of H2O, we're just going to go into our periodic table and we can see that there is two hydrogens, so two hydrogens and one oxygen. So to work out the mass, you could say um, two times one because hydrogen has a mass of one plus one oxygen which has a mass of 16 and that's going to give us um, 18 grams per mole. So then we could use 18 over there. And then we could work out that we have two moles. So we have two mole of H2O. So two moles of H2O. So now all of a sudden we have the moles of H2O and we have Avogadro's number. And so what we're trying to calculate now is this one. So if you just look at your triangle with um, N at the top, N and NA, I put this one at the top because it's at the top over here. And so what we're trying to calculate is this one. So if we want this one over here, then that means you need to multiply these two. So we know that we can say N is equal to N multiplied by Na. So N is equal to the number of moles, which is two, multiplied by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And if you had to work this out, you end up with 1.204 times 10 to the power of 24 uh, molecules of H2O, of H2O. The next part of this lesson is really important. Let's say we have a water, let's say we have a water molecule. Now a water molecule is made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen. It says here two hydrogens and one oxygen. So if we have 10 water molecules, 10 water molecules. Okay, so let's actually go draw 10 water molecules. And one more. Okay, so here we have 10 water molecules. So can you see how many or how many oxygens do we have? 
Well, if you had to go count all the oxygens, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there were ten water molecules, and can you see that in each water molecule, there's one oxygen. So that means we also have 10 oxygens. So this means we have 10 oxygen atoms. And how many hydrogens would that be? Well, if you had to go count all the hydrogens, um, there's two hydrogens for every single water molecule. So that means if you had to go count that all up, you should end up with 20 hydrogen atoms. So 20 hydrogen atoms. And so if you had to go count all the atoms all together, there should be a total of 30 atoms, 30 atoms all together. So we had 10 water molecules, but that's a molecule. But if you had to go count all the different atoms, there was actually 30 different atoms. So let's try something like this. They tell us that we have five CO2 molecules. Okay, so we've got five CO2 molecules. So let's say a CO2 looks like that. Um, it's got one carbon and two oxygens. Okay, so that's one CO2 molecule. Now we have five of those. Okay. Okay. So there we've got five CO2 molecules. Now the first question says, how many carbon atoms do we have? Well, that's just going to be one, two, three, four, five. Five molecules. And then in each one, we have one carbon. So that means we're going to have five carbon atoms, five carbon atoms. The next question says, how many oxygens? Now, instead of having to draw this out, can you see that the answer will be 10? Because in each of them, there are two oxygen atoms, and we have five of these all together. So if you had to go count, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10 oxygen atoms, and so all together we have 15 atoms. Now, another way to do this is, if you look at a CO2 molecule, it's got three atoms. Can you see that? There's three atoms. Now, if you have five of those, well, what is five times three? Well, that would be 15, so that's where we have 15 atoms. Now, we're going to start making it a little bit more challenging. So here's a really good example. It says that we have been given two mole of CaCO3. Now remember, mole is not the number of particles. Mole is just this one over here, okay? So the first question says, determine the number of CaCO3 molecules. Okay, so that's an easy question. We'll just use this formula. Now remember that N is the mole. Capital N is the number of molecules or atoms, depending on what they're talking about. And then, uh, let's see, Na is Avogadro's number. And that is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So it says, determine the number of CaCO3 molecules. Okay, so we can just say, um, so we take this formula, but they want us to work out the number of molecules. So if we make a triangle, we know that this is at the top. So it's like that. So if you want to get this one by itself, then you are going to end up um, multiplying these two at the bottom together, like that. And so that's going to be number of moles multiplied by Avogadro's number. And so if you had to work this out, and that is going to give us 1.204 times 10 to the power of 24 uh, CaCO3 molecules. Now. For the next questions, we need to check this out carefully. So in a CaCO3 molecule, so you've got a calcium, um, you've got a carbon, and then you've got three oxygens. Okay, let's actually just draw it. So let's say it does that, for example. So can you see that for every calcium carbonate molecule, for every one calcium carbonate molecule, there is one calcium. Can you see that inside here? For every one calcium carbonate, there's one calcium. So we can say that the ratio is one to one. So that means that the number of calcium atoms is going to be the same as the number of calcium carbonate. And so that's going to be 1.204 times 10 to the 24. Now for this question, it says determine the number of carbon atoms. Now if you look inside here, for every one calcium carbonate, 
there is also only going to be one carbon. So they are in a one to one ratio. So that means that this would also be 1.204 times 20 to the 24. Now here's where it gets interesting. They say determine the number of oxygen atoms. Well, in every one calcium carbonate molecule, there is one, two, three oxygens. So the ratio of calcium carbonate to oxygen is in a one to three ratio. So the number of oxygens will actually be 1.204 times 10 to the 24 multiplied by 3, and that would give us 3.612 times 10 to the power of 24. Let's do another example. So this is quite a good question because it's going to actually test us on a few different things. So here they say we have been given 36 grams of H2O. The first question says determine the number of H2O molecules. Okay, so we need to work out the number of molecules. So that's this one. Now, we know that Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, so we know this one, but we don't know the number of moles. So well done if you thought about, we possibly will probably have to use this formula. And so, guys, the rain has just started pouring um, outside my window. It is pouring so nicely. I love it. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, so... Um, where was I? Okay, yes, yeah, so we're going to have to use this formula. And to use this formula, remember that M is the given mass, which is the mass that they give you, okay? It's the given mass, and it's measured in grams. Then you get capital M, which is called molar mass, and that's from your periodic table, which is this thing over here, by the way. <laughs> and then that's measured in grams per mole. And then, um, okay, so we're going to go use this formula. So we're going to say N is equal to 36, which is the given mass. Now to work out the molar mass of H2O, you need to use your periodic table. So we know that in a, in a molecule of H2O, there are two hydrogens, so two hydrogen atoms plus one oxygen. So if we had to go work out the mass of that, it would be 2 multiplied by the mass of a hydrogen, which is 1, plus 1 multiplied by the mass of an oxygen, which is 16, and that would give you 18 grams per mole. So that's your capital M, so we can put that over there. If you calculate that, you end up with 2 mole. Now we know the number of moles, so we can come back to this formula, and we could work out the number of particles. Remember, the number of particles and the number of moles are not the same thing. Number of moles is this. Number of particles is this. And so now we need to use this formula, and we need to calculate the capital N. So remember that you could make a little triangle for yourself where the N is at the top, so that's going to be like that, and then like that, and like that. So if you need to calculate this part, which is at the top, then you end up saying um, small n multiplied by, um, well, you say these two multiplied together, and so that's going to be like that, and so that would be 2 for the number of moles, multiplied by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and that'll give us 1.204 times 10 to the 24. So that would be the number of water or well, H2O uh, molecules. Okay, so that would be the answer for question A. Now, if we look at a water molecule, okay, now a water molecule is H2O. So it's got two hydrogens and one oxygen. Okay, that's important that we understand that for the next questions. So the next question for question B, it says determine the number of hydrogen atoms. Now, can you see that for one water molecule, there are um, two hydrogens. So for one water molecule, there are two hydrogens. So if we know the number of water molecules, then we can work out the number of hydrogens by just multiplying by two. So we could say 1.204 times 10 to the 24 multiplied by two, and that would give 2.408 times 10 to the 24. So that would be the number of hydrogen atoms, okay? Now for the last question, it says determine the number of oxygens. So can you see that in one water molecule, the ratio of, so if you have one water molecule, then the number of oxygens is one. So the ratio is one to one. For one water molecule, you have one oxygen. 
So that means that the number of oxygens will be the same as the number of water molecules, which would be um, 1.204 times 10 to the 24.